Hey everybody, this is uh, some of the pastors from New Song Church and uh, we know that uh, some of you have had uh, some little Christmas celebrations this week already. Some of you may be having it today when you watch this, uh, but guaranteed this is the quietest Christmas ever. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we weren't able to get Pastor Joe or Wadaji and Nardi to, uh, to join with us, uh, but we got the good looking ones on. So, you know, that's, that's the main thing. And uh, so um, we weren't able to record a, a service uh, for this weekend. So we thought, yeah, but it's Christmas. So how about we just uh, talk about some things related to uh, to Christmas and what this year has been like, and some of the things that uh, that we hope for, and and um, so um, it would be really cool to um, hear uh, some of uh, the memories from Adam and Emily and Nelly. Um, when you think back on uh, your uh, lifetime of Christmases. Uh, what are some uh, some highlights or traditions or special memories that uh, when you think about Christmas, man, that was that was the the big deal. Who's who wants to go first? I've lived longer, so I have many, and uh, I'll I'll share my stories too. You want me to start with one? Go for it. Yeah. Okay. With, right. wisdom, wisdom before beauty. Oh yeah. Well, you got that. You got that right. You got that right. So, okay. So, uh, when I fell in love with Marsha and, uh, we were, uh, getting engaged, I had a plan to give her her engagement ring on Christmas. Now it wasn't a surprise because she, um, went with me to Toronto and we picked out rings and, and all that, but I hadn't given her the ring yet. And, uh, you know, I thought that'd be really romantic and nice, you know, a Christmas engagement. Um, I couldn't wait. December 23rd, downtown Ex Exeter, and it was raining. <laughs> and it was after hours. And uh, we had been, been out for the evening. And so I pulled over uh, my car and uh, said, come on, get out. I got to show you something. And so she gets out on the sidewalk and then I give her her ring. I couldn't wait for one Christmas Eve. I couldn't wait for two days to Christmas Day. I, but that's probably like childhood too, you know? You, you can't wait, you can't wait. So, so that's one of my stories. Who's got one? Uh, I guess I have a funny one. Um, so growing up, we, we always get, we always got a real tree. We never had a fake tree. Um, so the first, I guess the first Christmas Adam and I were together, um, he came uh, Christmas tree hunting with my family. And so my dad thought it would be nice to have Adam pick out the tree. But uh. Adam's family never did real trees. So he never really understood like types of trees and which ones the needles fall off too quick and all of that. So he picks this tree and we're like, are you sure? Like, that's the tree. Like you gotta, we gotta live with this. And he's like, yeah, that's the tree. So we cut it down and he comes to uh, our place over Christmas and like the lead or the, I guess not leaves, the needles were just falling off this tree up until Christmas time. Like it, it was bad. Like it was pretty bare. So Boxing Day comes around. Christmas is all over. And usually my parents would leave our tree up, you know, till New Year's kind of thing, um, depending if we had family over. And like my dad was so frustrated with this tree because all the needles <laughs> are off of it. So like my dad's throwing this tree out of our house on Boxing Day morning, being like, I'm done. And that was the last time Adam was ever able to pick out a tree there was no needles on the tree when I got outside there's none there you have it yeah that's exactly it it, it, <laughs> was, it was the Charlie Brown tree <laughs> look at Charlie Brown's smile he's so proud 
looks just like how Adam was when he first picked it up. I could believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, I can think of the Christmas exactly. Uh, I can't remember how old I was, but I can remember exactly where I was and who was all there. Um, that really made Christmas like magical for me. Um, we, this, this was the year that I realized like Santa wasn't real. Um, uh -oh. And I got to help my mom wrap the presents, right? Uh, at that point, I wasn't the best secret keeper. Mm -hmm. um, I liked, you know, to know things. So Christmas morning, as everyone's like getting their gifts under the tree, I was like, I think it's a this. And they would open it up. And that's exactly what it, up, what it was because I helped wrap it. So I knew what it was. <laughs> and so I kind of ruined the surprise for every single person as they were opening their presents. Um, and after like a good reprimand and some discipline from my mom about like, you know, let it be a surprise. Mm -hmm. I realized how much more fun it was to be like, you know, to have that little secret of this is what they're yeah. getting, have someone open it. And yeah, so. The how, how old were you, Nelly? <laughs> I feel like I was maybe nine. Yeah. 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 Oh, look at I Nelly. <laughs> there, I was still believing that Santa Claus is real. At, though, that house that we're at um, was the first house my parents owned. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't have a fireplace or a chimney. So from then, I was skeptical because I asked them, <laughs> well, how did Santa get into our house to get us presents? And they're like, oh, he just climbed through the back window. I was like, ah, okay, maybe, maybe. Liars, yeah. liars. <laughs> Adam, you got any uh, stories uh, or did Emily take your best one? Um, yeah, other than that, I don't really have a lot of funny Christmas stories. I just remember Christmas always being this time that like we would get together as family and it just being there having a lot of fond memories but not necessarily ones that I look back and none of them really stick out it's just kind of the culmination of every Christmas day when I was a kid we'd go to my aunt's we'd have a big like Christmas dinner as a family um you know me and my cousins we'd like get our skates on and, and go back and play pond hockey um the good old like small town uh, uh, Ontario Christmas kind of thing um, all of those moments like I look back on it and they're just they're very fond memories um, and it's it's unfortunate that this year that might not happen yeah yeah uh, when <clears throat> when we were kids um, there was several years where we would always go to um, my uh, one of my cousin's house and celebrate Christmas together uh, because they had five kids and we had three and so there was a, a lot of connecting points uh, with the cousins and and uh, I just remember like uh, the the night before uh, like sharing a room with with my cousins and and thinking and talking about what do you think we're going to get for Christmas and 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 then like being super awake with anticipation and uh, then finally you know kind of eventually drifting off to sleep but then like waking up at like 5 30 and be ready to start Christmas and but every year um, Uncle Milt uh, whose house we were at um, he was not an early riser like uh, the Christmas kids were so he'd get up you know, close to 9 a.m. And we'd be like, you know, come on, come on, come on. And and then he would go and sit on the toilet for his morning movement, which usually took a while. And then he'd come out, you know, and then he'd have to sit down and have breakfast. So like, we're just like, come on, come on. So that, that was... Uh, part of our bonding through crisis you know learning to learning to endure the schedule of adults it was horrible yeah as kids we were very eager as well mm -hmm. to open presents I mean who isn't um but 
I think as we got older, as we were all teenagers, a big part of our culture um, is eating pepper pot, which is a, basically a beef stew, but it's sweet and spicy. And it's mm. the national uh, dish of Guyana. Um, and you eat it with bread. Um, so like a loaf of bread. And at this time of year, it's like the one time it's ever acceptable to eat an entire loaf of bread by yourself. <laughs> Um, cause you eat it, like you dip it in the stew. Like it's just, it's so good. And we only make it at Christmas time. So it's like special dish. And so as we got older, the pepper pot kind of became more important than yep. the presents. But as kids, it was definitely like presents first, pepper pot after. Yeah. 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 I also remember, um, my, uh, my dad, uh, when he was pastoring in Port Elgin. And uh, at that time, um, he was working full time at a, a dairy and, uh, and then pastoring uh, this little, little church, 30 people. And uh, he was also um, studying with uh, correspondence courses, um, what would now be the equivalent of global university. And uh, so he um, uh, was very focused on um, building a, a life in ministry, um, but we were also really, really poor. And, uh, and I remember one Christmas, um, there was some unexpected uh, expenses that came up. I don't know if it was car repairs or replacing an appliance or whatever it was, it was like, the money was exhausted. And I remember my dad sitting down with me and picture this, I'm like grade one, you know, and him saying, well, you know, um, we just want you to know that um, this Christmas uh, we're, um, we're really having a hard time uh, with, with money. And uh, we might not be able to do very much at all you know, for, for gifts this year. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, being a sweet little grade one, oh, that's okay, daddy. And, you know, and, and, uh, but then he said, well, but let's, why don't we pray and ask God to help us to have a good Christmas. And so, okay, so, okay, dad. So, so we prayed and um, the very, Next day, um, there was a uh, women's ministry from a Pentecostal church in Southern Ontario that uh, had uh, selected uh, my parents as their home mission um, church to support. And the very next day, this big box showed up and inside the box were all these different presents. And, uh, and I remember uh, this red fire truck, you know, that was for me. And, um, and that, that had a profound effect on a little guy seeing that, yeah, you know what? God answers prayer. And uh, so that's, that's a very cherished lifelong memory. And, uh, you know, as we think about what people are going through right now at Christmas time, some of you are very happy and you've got your your small gathering and and others of you aren't able to have your gatherings right now and um, you're feeling kind of let down and kind of you know what just one more disappointment one more sad thing to be happening and and uh well i want to i want to share a, a passage of scripture um to encourage us and uh, David wrote in Psalm 103, he says, I will praise the Lord. Deep down inside me, I will praise him. I will praise him because his name is holy. I will praise the Lord. I won't forget anything he does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my sicknesses. He saves my life from going down into the grave. His faithful and tender love 
make me feel like a king. He satisfies me with the good things I desire. Then I feel young and strong again, just like an eagle. The Lord does what is right and fair for all who are treated badly. And when I read that passage, um, it, it, a couple things really spoke out to me. You know, one was that uh, I don't, I won't forget anything he does for me. And um, the other thing is that uh, his love, faithful and tender love, makes me feel like a king. And, uh, you know, so uh, the circumstances that are in our lives, um, you know, don't have to defeat us if, if we can take the time to remember uh, all of the ways that uh, God has helped us. And, and to think back on our lives, the forgiveness of our sins, the miracles, you know, the, the times that he's provided, the times that he saw us through really difficult times. And, um, and then it's none of the circumstances necessarily make me feel like a king, but his love for me, that, that's what sets me right every time. That's what fills me up with, with hope. And, you know, we had uh, Thanksgiving back in October and uh, I think that, you know, um, it would be good for us for 2020 to actually have double Thanksgiving um, because the thing that's really at risk for a lot of people right now is their gratitude. Um, and, you know, this has been a, been a tough year and, and uh, you know, um, I've, I've been at, at my wits end more than once this year. And there've been times when all I could do was say, I'm trusting the Lord, I'm trusting the Lord. And, uh, and then I live to, to see his goodness another day, you know? So what about you? What, what has, what have you been learning this year about gratitude um, and everything give thanks? So, so what are you grateful for? I think first and foremost, I'm thankful for health uh, because I've been healthy and strong and haven't been personally, like physically, bodily affected by um, the coronavirus itself. Uh, I do know a few people mm -hmm. who have, some family mm -hmm. members, some friends, um, but thankfully, like great. I'm usually one that gets sick at every season change at like, you know, just <laughs> the weather changes for two days and I, I got a cold. Yeah. Uh, but this year I was actually quite healthy. <clears throat> So definitely thankful for that. Yeah, I think for me, I'm just, I'm thankful for new opportunities. Um, this year, although it's torn away a lot of opportunities, it's also reframed a lot of things for me. And just people that I wouldn't necessarily maybe rub paths with, um, I've had the opportunity to be able to do that this year yeah. and, and God, God's been able to use me and work through me in ways that, um, in a, in a quote unquote normal world may have never happened. Yeah. I like, I think for me, um, I guess I like, I'm like, same with Nelly. Like I'm grateful, you know, for health besides like, you know, the, the common colds that we get, but like, in terms of this being a year that we, you know, we became parents and things like that. Like I'm grateful for, I guess, the time to slow down, even though it maybe was a little bit busier during, during, during certain times, just because of ministry. Um, but I think it allowed us to slow down and just take those moments of just a new family. And there was no stress of getting to this family, get, get together and, you know, introducing Micah to this family member, even though that's something that we desired. And, you know, I'm thankful for, you know, the opportunity that we'll be able to do that, but um, just grateful to have the time as a family of three. Yeah, I, I think this, this year for some, it has chipped away at any sense of entitlement, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, oh, I, I deserve better or, 
you know, I should have, I should have this and, and, you know, with, with everybody in, in constant turmoil and, and adjustment, it's like, that doesn't matter near as much. I was also going to say that my family uh, moved down this way over the summertime and bought a restaurant, as some of mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and so that has been a lot of um, changing of my schedule, changing of um, like my life in general, because now I get to see my family more. I don't have to go out of town to do that. Yeah. I'm just in the Windsor, Essex area. Um, so that's been nice. And because of that, I also get to spend Christmas with them. I live by myself. And so you're allowed to mix with one household at least. So I chose them. Uh, uh. It's great <laughs> for me this time around. Um, but yeah, just like having people uh, around me, even in a time where we're supposed to isolate uh, and all that, just having moved here a couple years ago, getting used to FaceTiming my family, uh, now getting to FaceTime and see them in person mm. has been really necessary, more than I thought um, that I had needed, but definitely nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, family. Uh... You, you, you view family in, in different, with a different lens, I think, mm-hmm. through this year. Um, yeah, anything else uh, that has uh, been kind of a learning curve year? What, what's, uh, what's still challenging? What's, uh, what's still yeah. keeping you on the edge, you know, wait, waiting? I've already, <laughs> already had plans canceled for next year uh and we're not even at next year so that sucks a whole lot um but still like having this um like I like to have things planned I like to have a schedule and have a calendar and have things in it uh Mm -hmm. and this year really taught me like throw it all out (laughs) like what's even the point of having one uh just kind of like on my toes but also trusting and anticipating for God to do something uh that he still has everything yeah right so I kind of go into next year thinking okay god like we'll just see what you have I'll just play it by ear I won't have anything too solid in my calendar um but just let you actually take control this year as I keep saying that you know Mm -hmm. this year is for you yep yep yeah I'm I'm I guess I'm thankful for um kind of along with what Nelly said in a funny way though um because I, I like schedule uh, very much and I like putting things in my calendar. And I always, as a kid, I was always envious of one of my best friends uh, who was the complete opposite of me because he could just like fly by the seat of his pants. There was no calendar. There was no scheduling anything and it didn't bother him. And I, I, I didn't understand that at all. Uh, in fact, it, it bothered me that I, that I couldn't comprehend it. Um, and this year has forced me to like, not become that person, (laughs) um, (laughs) but learn, learn how to understand that a little bit more because there's no, there, there isn't a routine. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You set one in motion and then it gets overturned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, things that we look forward to now are skip the dishes. <laughs> I, I got to say, when it comes comes to Netflix and <laughs> and uh, all the online offerings, I am so bored of TV. <laughs> there was this post going around that said, um, "I take a break from my work screen, which would be my laptop here, uh, to look at my little screen." To then look, sit in front of my big screen, which is TV, <laughs> and that's your like your rest screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, Nelly, one of the things that uh, we all get to look forward to, but especially you, is uh, we have a master's college uh, intern coming early in January and Michaela is going to be staying with you. There's Michaela on the screen. Hi, Michaela. Um, and uh, I had a chance to meet Michaela and her dad and her mom uh, 
the last time that I had um, any kind of major road trip. And uh, that was, uh, I went to the Exponential Conference in Orlando, Florida uh, last February. And in fact, while we were down there, they started, they were ramping up about all this uh, pandemic shutdown stuff. And, and we got back just in time before they, uh, they closed the border. But uh, Michaela and her parents, uh, her dad uh, just graduated from uh, Bible college. And so that here's uh, one of the kids uh, also uh, wrapping up her Bible college. So it's going to be interesting, um, you know, to uh, create uh, meaningful ways for, uh, for her to be involved if this shutdown goes on much longer. But we'll, mm -hmm. we'll put our, uh, our creative energies together and we'll, we'll, we'll make it fun for her. For sure. Yeah. Um, so when we, um, let, let's just think about um, New Song uh, church today. And, and, um, when, um, when we think about, you know, when this is all over and restrictions are all gone and we don't have to re restrict gatherings to 30% and, you know, all that social distance. And if that day ever comes, what are some really great ways that we can celebrate what would you uh, want to do? And what could we as a church do to just um, recapture some things that maybe we've misplaced? Well, I'm sure for one, everyone would hug everyone. <laughs> Big hugging party, yeah. <laughs> Big hug. <laughs> yeah, no exceptions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then just along with that, like, I think worship is yeah. just so big for our church. Like we're, our name is new song and we love to sing. We love to sing together. And so yeah. I just, yeah. I see, um, just us coming together for just this big celebratory worship service. Mm. Yeah. Um, just to yep. you know, celebrate having gotten to the other side, but then yep. you know, in the freedom that we have, uh, to gather again. I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe a big old pig roast. <laughs> I mean, I'm allergic, but I'll have oh, okay. Yep. Whatever else is around. <laughs> How about goat? Can you have goat? That. Yes. Okay. A goat roast. A goat roast. <laughs> Doesn't quite roll off. The tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like having a potluck. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, like. It's, it's kind of weird because you go from like, okay, nobody touching anything to then like everybody touching everything. Everybody yeah. touching the same thing. We're going to be feeding it. each other. So it's kind of like, <laughs> is that okay to say? <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever go back to like having someone blow out candles on a birthday cake and then all eating it. So um, oh. I don't know about that. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah, actually I saw... I saw um, a video this morning and it was about, you know, things that we used to do that you, people would think you're crazy doing it right now. And they talked about how this person was from like small town, Ontario and uh, going to like the corner store and picking out the penny candies. And then you would literally have to take them to the front counter and you dump them. And then the cashier <laughs> would count them all for you to make sure that it was the right amount with their hands. And and then you put everything back in the bag and just go eat it. And I'm like, yeah, you, you, you can't do that. And, and the, like, like the, church butler. her reaction was like, and I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Oh, the things we can't do right now. Oh, and, and packing out, packing out the building and mm -hmm. having community meals and uh oh yeah yeah just just being able to to reach out in in uh very direct ways um yeah i'm looking forward to all that and uh you know i think that uh right now we need some hope and we need to be thinking about the future it is almost 2021 and uh our hope 
doesn't rest on our circumstances that are, we're looking forward to. It's our hope is in the Lord and uh, he does all things well. He knows what we're going to be able to do and when. And uh, so we're, we're just learning how to, how to be grateful people right now. Um, what about, um, you know, um, a, a word of encouragement uh, for uh, all the folks listening? who are part of New Song Church. Um, what would, uh, do you got a, anybody want to just share sort of your own uh, encouragement or a, a word of, of hope for people? Uh, a, a reminder, who's, who's got something? The first thing that comes to mind is we made it. Yeah. <laughs> anything else, we made it to the end of this year. Uh, and yep. it's not like, the clock strikes midnight at, you know, December 31st and it all goes away. Um, but we made it this far. God continued mm -hmm. to give us breath and a heartbeat and life. And that means that he's not done with us yet. So mm -hmm. we're, we're still kicking for purpose and uh, God can still use us in this season and coming into the next year. For sure. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about New Year's resolutions um, because it's a time of the year. But I've also noticed that people aren't really talking about them this year mm. um, because there's not normally I'll see articles upon articles about like what the top New Year's resolutions are at this time of year. Right. This year, I haven't seen anything. And it got me wondering and it got me thinking and reflecting upon this year. And this year, as much as it was like the year of there's no point for a lot of people, I feel like in some ways. Uh, this year has reminded me, and I hope it's reminded us as the church as a whole, that this year was a year of constant resolution. Mm -hmm. um, because it was a year of being reminded that we don't have to wait till January 1st to make that change in our life. Um, because change was around us all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, it's like, don't what whatever you know whatever you're unhappy with in your life whatever you haven't really given over to god um maybe you picked up a lot of bad habits along the way this year um rather than waiting till january 1st uh to make a resolution to change you know if this year has taught me anything is why not change it right now yeah that's yeah. good yeah i think that um like going into the new year like it's so easy to to look back on this past year and you know see all the things that we missed out on um the things that you know those things that we felt like we were entitled to those traditional things that we do in the summer and you know when school's out and all of those kind of things and I think when it's so easy to see what you've missed if you just took the time to realize what you kind of have in front of you and what you can be thankful for, um, that there will come a time where, um, there's something to look forward to. There's always going to be something to look forward to. It doesn't matter, you know, what, um, circumstance you're in, you can always kind of, I would hope, look to see something better. Um, and I think as we go into a new year, even though, you know, we're starting off the new year, kind of you know on lockdown again and all of those kind of things um and we know what that feels like and we know what that looks like um you know we can kind of think okay but what's next god what do you what do you have next you know sure i missed out on you know maybe family christmas i missed out on you know a new year's party or things like that that you get together with friends but you can see okay god what do you have next for me what is something that you know, I can take from this and what are you, what are you, what are you doing in my life and how are you shaping me, um, you know, to move out of this and, you know, to be the church after this and what that actually looks like. Mm. Right. Yeah, I think, I think this has been a year of reframing our attachments hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, New Song Church, uh, you changed, bro. Uh, <laughs> You, you, no, new song. You, you have changed from uh, last year at this time until now. Uh, you know, when, when, when I take that retrospective view, 
of where we're at and where we were and where we were heading. Uh, it was it was all good, uh, but uh, but we've had to we've had to um, reframe what's important, reframe our attachments. And one of the things I I so appreciate is that reframing of attachment to to love one another and and to uh, to to connect um, in some some new ways and. And, uh, you know, what, what will God do in the coming year? He started such a good thing in us. And uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, I'm not naive, uh, but I am hopeful that, uh, that God is going to do more than we can ask or think. And uh, that more people are going to discover God's goodness and come into his kingdom. In, in the days ahead. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful uh, for New Song Church and, and for, for you, Nellie, and Adam and Emily and Wadaji and Nardi and Joe and Michelle and, and uh, just everybody that uh, I just listed off the pastoral team and, and uh, you're my peeps, you know, we're kind of the, we're, we're the, the sort of the, uh, the, the, the special tribe, you know, that uh, has has the interesting work to do, but but so many great people that God has placed around us, and um, and I, I'm just amazed at, at watching people that were either on the fence or you know not not too uh, committed over this year. I watched many who it was just like something changed and they said i'm all in and uh that's that's amazing that's so amazing um well i'd like it if we could uh each uh just say a uh, prayer of blessing over new song church and uh i'll uh i'll start and then uh the others can follow lord jesus uh as as your servants together on this call uh, we uh, acknowledge that, Lord, you're the one who is building your church and nothing stops your good work from happening. Lord, you accomplish what you set out to do. And, and I pray, uh, Lord, for uh, each person that's uh, connected and uh, those who are watching this today. I pray that, uh, Lord, uh, they would know more than they ever did how much love you have for them. That they are your beloved and uh, that uh, Lord, they can trust you um, and they can, can hope when it looks like there is no hope. And uh, Lord, uh, I pray that uh, this will be a year that brings incredible clarity and uh, strength to your body. I pray that, uh, I pray for um, the reopening of uh, youth and children's and campus ministry for uh, Adam and Emily and Nellie and, and uh, for the reopening Lord of our outreaches and places uh, like 920 OLED and uh, places like Glengarry and, and uh, out of our own doors. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we pray that you would uh, uh, oversee and direct us, Lord, as, as the days unfold in your precious name. All right, who would like to go next? God, we just, uh, we thank you for this year. That may seem like such a strange thing, but, but God, that you are still in charge and, and God, you are, you are very much in charge of the people listening to this, the people of New Sun Church. And God, this year that has become very evident. 
God, I, I just want to honor and thank you for each and every one of them. Thank you, Lord. Um, the people that have they that have really just stepped up to the plate this year uh, with helping, serving, doing so much. God, giving of themselves, and and really just showing the attitude of Christ. So, God, I, I pray that you would just bless them. God, that you would pour your love upon them, uh, that you would keep them safe. God, but most of all, God, that you would inspire each and every one of us to go and do your will and your work this year, this coming year, um, in ways that we haven't thought of yet. And we don't know when the end of all this is happening, God, um, or if it's ever going to happen. But God, regardless of when it does, I pray that you would give us the strength uh, to continue to do your good work. Yeah. Yeah, God, I just, uh, I thank you. Yeah, again, I thank you for this year and I thank you for, um, for new song, God. I thank you for um, us really just reframing, you know, how we see ourselves as a church and, you know, how we can be your hands and feet. And God, I just pray for this coming year. I pray that as we, you know, continue to navigate what this, um, what lockdown looks like and what, you know, ministry looks like and what the church is supposed to look like, God. Um, I pray that you remind us that first and foremost, um, that, yeah, you are in charge. God, that you have a plan. And God, that you are, are wanting us to step up to the plate. God, you're wanting us to, to take that next step on what um, being your hands and feet look like. So God, I pray as a church, um, we would step into that, um, that we would be open to what you have, that we would be open um, to reaching people um, that we never thought possible really through this, God. So I pray that you would, um, that you would teach us to be thankful even in the midst that you would teach us to be hopeful um, and God that that as a church we would be excited of what's to come that we would we look forward to what's to come that we wouldn't just get stuck in a rut of not being able to meet but God that we would look forward to the day when we can celebrate that we can come together and be like this is what the church looks like this is what the church is supposed to be so God, I pray um, just a blessing over New Song Church as we, uh, we step into 2021 um, and God, what you have in store for us. God, we thank you for a year uh, that you can remind us of your faithfulness. God, um, of course, this year is not like any other that we've lived through. So I just thank you uh, that we've come to this point of it. God, that in the next week that's left of 2020, uh, we can just look back and say, God, you were faithful here, 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 and here. Uh, and Lord, I just pray that your church would uh, see your faithfulness through it all. Like the verse that we read before, that we wouldn't lose sight of your faithfulness, that we wouldn't forget the things that you've done. Uh, a, a verse that's been uh, over and over in my, my heart is Romans 12, 12, where it says, be joyful in hope patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. And God, I pray that your people would be that. Lord, would we be joyful in hope, patient yeah. in affliction and faithful yeah. in prayer in 2021. God, you know the hearts of every single person that's tuning in this morning, uh, that's also um, tuning in throughout the week, God, that's thinking of what's, what's gonna happen in the new year. God, I just pray that we will be able to leave it all in your hands, to be able to trust you, uh, and just to reflect again on how you've brought us through the year that we've been through and how you're gonna continue to take us through the year that's ahead of us. God, we know that you are good and you are faithful. And I just pray that uh, there would be moment after moment where we can point out that goodness and faithfulness that you've been to us. Lord, we thank you again for this year. Uh, and I just ask that in the coming year, um, God, would we just find your presence in our homes? Would we find your peace in our homes? 
uh, we know that the church isn't locked down. The church isn't closed because um, you are with us. And that's exactly what this season is here to remind us that God came to be with us. And so I pray in the the year to come and in the next week uh, that we would just feel your presence and your peace so much more tangible in our own lives uh, and that the people around us could see that there's something so different about us. Yeah, Lord, would you just um, continue to pour your peace and your presence over your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, um, before we go, I just want to say a big thank you and shout out to uh, Roger Fordham and all our staff uh, with Feeding Windsor, uh, Mm -hmm. to our board members, to all of our uh, teachers and and people that, that serve the kids and and uh, you know, just uh, too many to to list and name, uh, because that that's part of the DNA of New Song Church is to be people that are active and serve. And and uh, but uh, if if nobody's told you yet, be told. Thank you. <laughs> you're you're really good people, and we love you. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas.